Okay, so lovely Alice. <laughs> <laughs> From your your everyday awesome. Hello, my darling. Thank you so much for joining me. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to have you here. So for those in my audience who don't know who you are and what you do, I'm a big fan of your work. Can you just give us a little scene set of what you do and what you're all about? Yes, absolutely. Well, first of all, my name is Alice Walker. It's nice to meet all of you out there. I'm the founder of My Everyday Awesome. It is a podcast for busy, busy women who want helpful and actionable tips, tools, and resources to live happier, healthier lives, um, who for the most part already, you know, aren't interested in quitting their job, don't need a, you know, don't need a huge, huge, huge makeover. They just, they just want a little bit of inspiration. They just want to start their day off a little bit happier. Um, so I run that, uh, and I really, really like it. Really I love it too. I'm, I'm a massive fan of your podcast. And as you say, it's, you know, I love the fact that, you don't feel like someone who's going to make me do something radical, but you're going to give me loads of tips that will gently enhance my day when I get going, right? Yes, exactly. There are no crash diets to be found. <laughs> There's no instant fix, no overnight success to anything, just small things that slowly make your life just way better. Awesome. So tell me how long has your podcast been going and how's all that journey going for you? Yeah, it, um, it started the 1st of June. Wow. And um, it's been going great, like a snowball down a mountain. Um, it's been really, really good. I do about a podcast a week. Yeah. And uh, I've been meeting lots of people and covering lots of topics. Mm -hmm. You know, everything from just how to put together a meal plan and how to take that meal plan and turn it into a grocery shopping list to how to create positive change and, you know, how to become a chronic optimist like I am. I love that. Um, a chronic optimist is such a brilliant thing to be. So what <laughs> kind of inspires your work now and what's your background behind starting My Everyday Awesome? Yeah, uh, well, it all started because before I went and chopped all my hair off a couple months ago, um, I had very long hair that was all the way down past my shoulders. And I decided, and I was never good at styling it, I was never good at dealing with it, um, until one day I found a, my mom's old set of 1960s vintage hair rollers. Like, you know, those hot rollers you'd yes. put up like a, like a housewife? And they were perfect because they were made before all the heat regulations came into place over here. They're so dangerous, right? So, oh, they're so dangerous, but they would get so hot. They would right. curl my hair beautifully. It looked amazing. But it would take me a solid 20 minutes in the morning where I would just be standing in front of the bathroom mirror, putting up my hair. And um, I'd never really had that much of like a standing still morning routine before. And I decided, you know, I really wanted something nice to listen to while I was doing my hair, while I was putting in my hot rollers. I wanted something, you know, inspiring, something kind of fun, something, I wanted some sort of middle ground between Chris Carr, um, who's a big, you know, food expert, wellness warrior, and Oprah, you know, okay, I like those big comparisons, like in the spirituality. Middle yeah, I wanted somewhere in the middle ground. And, you know, unfortunately, yeah, Oprah does have a podcast, but it's about an hour long. Mm. Um, and there's a lot of, a lot of stuff in there that I just couldn't quite dig into. And so I went looking for that podcast. I was like, you know, 15, 20 minutes to something that's going to something that'll really make me start my day, like feeling ready to just like kick ass and take over the world. And I just couldn't find anything. Nothing, nothing was really doing it for me. Nothing was what I was looking for. And I was like, well, if I want this, other people must want it too. So I'm just going to make the podcast that I want to listen to. Um, and it took me about, you know, six months of hemming and hawing and being like, I'm going to do it. I'm not going to do it. That's so scary. I'm going to do it. I'm going to launch it. And it's going to be amazing. I'm never touching a microphone in my life. Right. You know, actually, before we started doing the formal sort of recording, we were just chatting, weren't we, about how a podcast feels different to a blog in that you are kind of putting yourself out there in a more exposed way. And, you know, I was kind of saying that, you know, obviously my blog, Dexterous Diva, has been going in various forms for about five years and it's been, you know, it snowballed at the time and it's now my business and I love it and all of that. And the podcast is a new thing and that has taken off to a whole new level. And it is different and it's a different way for people to connect with us, isn't it? As content, you know, creators, yeah. we are able to show how our voice actually sounds and we can't kind of edit everything to the nth degree before we're posting mm -hmm. it. And it's a bit more raw and a bit more authentic. 
yeah, you get more cheesy jokes in there. Yeah. You know, when you're just sort of talking and you kind of get on a roll about something and then you're making some puns and but you're it's like, who you are, isn't it? Oh, it's, it's who you yeah. actually are. <laughs> and whereas I would kind of blog and kind of put in some sort of meme gif or something or kind of be doing images to bake it all up, it, you know, mm-hmm. like this, it, like it's literally just us and, you know, it's kind of more raw. So what were you doing prior to your podcast? What's your background? Yeah, I have a marketing background. Okay. Um, So I've been working um, in marketing for the last couple of years. Before that, I actually went to school for creative writing. Um, Yeah. So it just, it seemed like sort of a, you know, it wasn't that much of a stretch for me to sort of write and outline these episodes. Um, And God knows in marketing, content is king. Uh, And before, and before I started my podcast, I really got into doing voiceover work. Okay. I started taking classes a couple of years ago um, just because it sounded like a really fun thing to try out. And that went really well. And so you know, I do do some voiceover on the side. And I was like, all right, I, you know, I know how to sound edit. I have a really nice microphone. I have all these tools. Um, I do want to mention, I do still have my full-time job. That's what I was I going am. to ask next. Are you working you know, I am. in your like, real job? <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, I've got a regular nine to five. I'll be headed out for there. You know, once this phone call is sure. done, back to back to the grind. And I, I'm very lucky because I actually have a job. I really like the coworkers who are all fantastic. But um, I find it it helps kind of keep the podcast really grounded mm. because I don't I don't have all day to sort of try out these, you know, different experiences and amazing things and, you know, juice cleanse for a week and do all of these sort of all more sort of crazy out there, um, like tips and techniques that sort of aren't really based in the real world for, you know, women who are like, that's great. I need to get out of the door in 20 minutes and I haven't had breakfast yet. So, right. And in fact, you know, I haven't been employed in a proper job, as we'd say, for probably about nine years now. And um, good for you. I know, which is brilliant, but it's good you know, for you. It's very, that, you know, that's not to say there haven't been some bridge jobs and some bridge contracts in between. There absolutely have been, and there's been twins that rocked up and all that sort of stuff. So I've kind of had a real journey with entrepreneurialism and being a mom and all that time. But you know, I would imagine that if you are working, in a, you know, in a job during the day, that you're actually working smarter on your podcast. You're having to come home and be like, right, okay, you know, let's get this done because I've got other stuff to do with my time, and you're probably on it. Yes, absolutely. I am so dedicated to my calendar. I'm in a very serious relationship with Google Calendar. Oh, me too. We are like yeah. that. We are. We- <laughs> I love my Google Calendar. And in fact, um, I've now been on the bullet journal train. Have you seen this bullet journal stuff that's flying around? No, I haven't heard of it. Oh, I'm so excited. You know, my Moleskine is like my kind of new BFF, which kind of felt weird because as a digital diva, you know, everything is on Asana. I double check my time in Google Calendar. I'm all about the schedule once, you know. It seems very old fashioned now, doesn't it? It It does. And kind of all of that is on there. But there's something about flowing, you know, with my little sort of bullet journal and, you know, mm-hmm. um, I did a post on it, in fact, sort of this week. And what I love is that you're unplugged while you're working with it. You know, you're kind of unplugged and you're flowing with your pen. And, you know, I like to get creative with sort of washi tape and, you know, sort of post-it notes in there and stuff. And it's like that's yeah. like a little hobby now for scheduling. Whereas if I sit with my Google Calendar and Evernote and stuff, it kind of doesn't feel as interactive. But I will always double check, you know, with my, you know, with my GCal because, you know, that's the lifeline, right? That's. (laughs) And I find if I work too much exclusively online, um, I just get sucked into the Internet. It's so hard for me to focus if I'm like, oh, I'm just going to type this on here and I'm here. Then I'm like oh, but Facebook is so close at hand. And yeah. what is happening on the news? I haven't checked it for 10 minutes. Something crazy could have happened. And we get swamped, don't we? Yeah. And then I'm go- and then I'm sucked in for 45 minutes. And then I'm like, wait, what was I doing? Yeah. Oh, I was working on my podcast? Oh, that's yeah. weird. So What's how do you about? really differentiate those times? And, and, and how do you map out, you know, how do you juggle it all, you know, with a full-time job and with your podcast and with life, you know? Well, my main, my main thing is I, I set a schedule and I absolutely, I, I live by it for the, I mean, if I get sick or if things in life come up, then I, 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 I'm as flexible as I need to be. But for the most part, with all these things going on, you know, I know exactly, you know, first thing, Monday morning, 6 a.m., that's when I start my outline. 
Then I do my work, you know, then Tuesday morning I come in and I refine it. And, you know, I always record Wednesday or Thursday night. Um, I also have a notebook that I like to sort of, I jot down my thoughts. I jot down my ideas. I sort of, I pull together a skeleton in my notebook, which lets me sort of turn off the brain, turn off, not the brain, but turn off the internet at least. And then once I have that outline, then I go, okay, I'm going to be on my computer typing, but it's all going to be in word. I try to not even have the internet open because it's that easy for me to fall into a wormhole. And then, um, I, I don't know if I'm going to keep doing this forever, but for my first couple, I did this for my first podcast and I just liked it so much. I kept doing it. I actually script out almost my entire show. I write beforehand. Um, and it's, it's definitely more time consuming, but I feel like it gives a much more polished end version. So I spend the first, I spend my more, I do most of my content in the mornings because I'm a morning person and that's what I'm supposed to do. So you're up at six and you're working. Yeah. I try and do it when, when everything's fresh and I have my coffee and I have that space. I find that when I get home from work, you know, after a really long day, I'm just, I'm, I'm going to be way less inclined to make something, you know, really amazing and fun and creative, that brain space for it. I think it's just due to the fact that I'm a morning person. Sure. Yeah. Um, so I do that in the morning and then, um, and then that way when I get home at night, it can be more focused on making dinner and seeing my husband and Relaxing. watching the TV and yeah, working on my crochet projects. Love just like, it. exactly. yeah. So then it doesn't feel like I'm working in the morning, working all day at work and then working yeah. when I get home. That's such God, a good thing. Terrible. So, you know, what I love there is what you're saying about slicing things up into sort of doable chunks. So you've got your sort of podcast for the week and you've you know, sort of done your content outline one day, you know, you're kind of sketching it out and working with it recording it editing it and you know this is something which I teach um on the boot camp on the blogging for business boot camp because I think people feel so overwhelmed with like I've got to create content and you kind of feel like there's a mountain but yeah it can be done just in smaller chunks yeah one foot in front of the other that's my whole theory for this whole business it's just baby steps baby steps one in front of the other and then eventually you'll get to where you're going if you just keep moving do you have goals for your podcast or are you seeing where it goes I do have goals for it. I do have goals. I um, obviously I want to grow my audience and get bigger and a little bit more well known. Um, I'm very excited. I'm just about I'm starting to work on a series of YouTube videos that are going to be more um, kind of hands on how to tutorials um, for some of the more concrete things like I think it would be kind of challenging to do a how-to on, you know, how to meditate, but can do a how-to on, you know, how to make almond milk using nothing but a blender and a nut milk bag. And, you know, like a a really, a really fast, easy way to cook up vegetables. And everything right now is very kitchen centered for me. That's probably going to evolve. No, no, that's great though, because actually, you know, being successful in your business and life relies on being healthy and it relies on eating cleanly. And yeah, so it's, it's such a massive thing, and that's part of my stuff as well. It's you know, work smarter, dream bigger, live brighter. And I always pull in, you know, what helps you to do that. And sure, you know, life gets messy, like it certainly does for me, but you know, all those things have to be in place for you to be and kind of in a you know, innovative person for you to live brightly. Yeah, exactly. So, so I'm really excited to build the YouTube videos and um, the podcast up and, and just sort of see where it goes already just doing it a couple months. There's already been so many amazing opportunities have come up and I've met so many amazing people. Um, you know, obviously, like all of the entrepreneurs out there, the dream is to have this turn into a, you know, really, really well profitable business and eventually you know, leave my full-time job. But um, at the same time, I'm really, really, really happy with how my life is right now. Oh, so if everything stayed, if everything stayed just the same as how it is in this, like today, I would be, I would be thrilled. That's so amazing. And I think it's so good to have the balance between being in the moment and between having your goals, right? Between thinking, right, you know, what could I stretch myself to? But enjoying yourself right now is just amazing. That's how it should yeah. be.